Good evening, everybody. I'll uh, bring this regular meeting of council to order for February the 15th, 2022. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the February 15th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lentoni. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the February 1st, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Councillor Delorier is not able to attend this evening. And we do have Councillor Morio attending by Zoom. For those in the audience here tonight, uh, you can see the screen where we do have other members of, of our administration that are present in the meeting, as well as a few people that are attending the, uh, the, uh, the public uh, hearing, conditional use hearing. Um, again, I'll state that, as I said earlier, that if you're walking in the room, we prefer that you wear a mask. If you're sitting down, you do not have to wear a mask. Four receptions and delegation of hearings result the regular meeting of council be suspended and further that the public hearing for conditional use 1 2022 be called to order at 7 31 p.m moved by the premier Tony, seconded by councillor bobic all in favor it's carried the purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use. To allow a re religious institution that offers counseling services in RS-5 zone. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person making representation come forward uh, to the table ahead of us uh, to hear their state their name and their civic address. So we'll proceed with the hearing. Who's going to begin? Anyone? Anyone that wants to speak also online. So we do have, um, I believe that we have, we have a George and we have a Jody. That's all I can see. Um, if you want to speak, uh, two or four, uh, just Either give me a, a yay or nay or something or a check mark on your screen. Yes, I will. Okay, then you can proceed. Just state your name and your civic address. Um, George Vanderbilt. I'm the owner of two, uh, 221 Fifth Avenue, Swan River. I, I reside in Brandon at this moment. Okay. You can proceed. Um, I, I have no problem against the uh, organization that wants to help people. Um, and I think there's quite a few people that probably will agree with me that um, this is a residential area. And I hope everybody can hear me well. Yeah. It's a residential area. A few years ago, there was a lawyer that tried to open a business in the same street and he was refused. Um, and so my opinion is that this is, should not be in a residential area where there's children playing, where there is um, activities that's gonna be 24 hours, seven days a week happening in there. Okay. That's and my opinion and, and, and it's, it's debatable, but I think we can talk about it. So I missed the last part. We can talk about it and we can debate it, but uh, that's my opinion. Okay. We, we don't get into debate, but we do hear okay. what, your, what your comments or, uh, or any questions that you may have. Because you, you do, we do have, I believe, um, part of the group that's here that may be able to answer questions if there is any questions that need to be answered as well. And that, that's included to any member of council as well. You can proceed to the chair if you like. All right. Chair, would you like me to set up? 
Just yes. one. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving my mask on because I've been working in the long-term care facility. So this is for all of you. Okay. Um, Thank you. I live at 216 Fifth Ave, and I am a social worker and certified counselor. So I work in a helping profession. And your name, and please. So your name, please. Jamie Dvorak. Okay. And so I very much appreciate what I think is trying to be done. Although I would, I do have some questions about it before I give my opinion. I'm very concerned about the state of our neighborhood as is without introducing other challenges. Um, I know of a <clears throat> assault on an elderly gentleman that occurred just a few days ago who is my uh, uncle's good friend. Um, there's a lot of break-ins. There's been a Molotov cocktail thrown through someone's window. So it's concerning to me to think about creating um, potential for more issues when we seem to have enough as is. And so I feel concerned about um, from a safety perspective as well as a quality of life perspective and the property values. I own a house on that street and I've, I've put a lot into that house. I've invested a lot and I don't want it to drop 20 grand in value. That's what I have to say for right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead. Name, address. Denise Ashcroft, 215 Fifth Avenue. Um, I feel the same as Jamie, and I think this is a wonderful idea, and we need it very badly. I deal with this on a daily myself. I know the problems we have, and I feel strongly with them, but I like to go home to my home, and I don't want to deal with it at home. Even though the situation that happened on Saturday was in my driveway, which is concerning, but anyway, um, I just feel that we, there's a lot of places uptown, other places. I know there's one of the sh um, shelters at the Sunrise House that is open. They don't have funding. They have a building. They have There's all kinds of things that are around that could maybe help. And and I think, it, like, I'm not opposed to it. I just don't want it on my street. I don't want my property values to go down. I want to deal with more people. During the day, we deal with the post office all day. But at least at five o'clock, it's done. There's nobody come down on our street most days, unless they're going to get the down. <laughs> I, I understand, I, I think it's a great thing, but I just don't feel I want this on my street. Okay. Anything I, from, again, from Mr. Also, yeah, as everybody has said so far from this street, um, going for a walk in the evening, like if this, facility is going to run 24 hours a day. Um, even the places where you can feel comfortable to go for a walk in the evenings now are, are down. Uh, when we have the activity like we did on the weekend in our back lane at 3 in the afternoon or whatever it was. Like, you know, you can't predict any of this stuff and, you, you know, and the service that that would provide is a great service and every community should have it but again as everybody said we just really don't want it in our residential neighborhood um kids grandkids you know i mean we're not saying they're bringing on a circus of monsters every day but can we just try and, and keep the residential area so it's just the residents dealing with that kind of thing, instead of inviting the possibility of something going wrong. That's all. And as it is say, you know, so uh, there again, obviously it's not the same, maybe it's not the same type of customers, for a lack of a better word, that perpetrated the thing in our back lane on Saturday, as it's going to be cruising up and down the street whatever time of the day or night or whatever i mean they need help and it's good to see them get it but 
I just, like I say, I think we're just possibly courting, courting one more danger on our on our street, you know, and then that speaks to property values and all of that. So there's not a lot of different sides to the story, but that's anyway, how we feel. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> So I Good. understand, of course, your concerns. Your and name, your name. My name is Monica Cornelson. We have own the business directly on the bridge. Um, Cornelson's Valley Services around Tide Depot. <clears throat> and as I work every day, except Sundays, I can see the traffic what we have on the bridge or underneath the bridge and I called quite often the police. It was not serious stuff for me personally happening. It was just that I see there's young folks, young children doing stuff underneath the bridge what is probably not in our all interest what they're doing there. And so I'm thinking to have uh, team challenge here in town would be really good because I can see the people who get addicted, they get younger and younger and I think this cannot be in our interest. Um, regarding safety, I would say right now what would happen right now is it get worse and worse. So if we can have some help to stop this downhill that includes also the value of properties and other things then we should try to get this help to get the people to a certain location where they get help where they get security and also maybe it would be also for us not bad to say hey here's something happening or we see this and this uh, person wandering around or whatever they will have the information who is it and is that maybe really a concern point where we have to call maybe the police or not? They will know the people. We do not know the people, right? So I think it would be a great um, asset to have um, social work here in this town who know the people, who work with them, because if we don't have them, what will change? Nothing. If we have them, we have a chance to change it, what we have right now going on. This is my opinion. And about the value, I understand your concern about your, the value of the houses. Um, let's say this church building, it stood empty for quite a while. It will stand most likely longer empty. What will happen? The building will get destroyed. The windows will get smashed. There will be random people living kinda in this house, in this empty building. It will get destroyed. And I think nobody wants to put money in just that it looks nice because it will get destroyed again. So what will happen with your houses if you have a house like this in your street? What gets empty? What will get destroyed? Where people would be wandering around and would do damages mm -hmm. and Monica just Direct your, uh, your Okay, computer, good, your, yeah. Uh, so okay. this is what I'm thinking about the value of the houses. I understand this problem, but I say an empty building is also a place what could drop the value of personal residential houses as well. And so also 24 hours it will be occupied in this building. So as much as I understand the church to help some people, I think this could be a great uh, asset also for the people who are living there or are doing business. And I do not agree that it's a just residential area because we have commercials there. We have just across the street, we have the funeral home. We have a little bit further the post office. And we are also not far away. So, I mean, this is also a mixed area where we have business going on. So, I can't 
see the residential just being residential at this corner there is business there is the funeral home there is another church and we have the post office there the safety i would say it can't get worse as it is right now put it in a short way the value of the building if an empty building no stands there the value of the other buildings around will drop as well and i see an asset in 24 hour have there somebody who would be open maybe even for residential people okay thank you okay it's my part uh, my name my name is uh, jacob for nelson one guy is my wife and my boss I wrote my points down because I'm better writing. As known, <clears throat> our office building is located between the railway bridge and the traffic bridge. For several years, we have been observing that young people are pushing their business below the bridge, causing harm to the, themselves and post potentially others. Especially since the legalization of some drugs, we have seen an increase of burglaries and damage to our business building. The Naughty Challenge can't solve all our solving problems, but, we, <clears throat> but in many individual cases, the challenge has helped drug addicted people get out of their addiction and integrate in the public life. According to uh, my information, the challenge has been working with drugs addicts over, for over 60 years with uh, a high success rate. A study from 2009 October shows that 78% are still sober and substance free. Uh, as a business owner of Condolence Valley Service Keramic Tile Depot, um, we welcome the challenge to open a corporation to provide rehabilitation, rehabilitation sorry, services to people stuck with addiction in our small town. We explicitly welcome the challenge in our neighborhood. It is better that if the young folks or not young folks go not under the bridge, but to the challenge. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We do have another uh, person on the video. Jody, is that uh, Ms. Stadnett? Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Uriah Waldner. I live at uh, One Pot, just one room. Um, yeah, I just wanted to voice support for Team Challenge. I uh, knew a fellow. You're, you're, the, the public hearing is actually open to members of the town of Swan River. I will go sit down. I'm sorry. Um, Ms. Stadnick, did you want to speak? Stop that. Anybody further? Councillor uh, Morio. Um, I don't know if there's anybody in the audience that's a proponent um, or that's bringing this forward. Uh, but I, and maybe the administration has the answers and can get them before I make my decision. Uh, but uh, I've heard people say 24-hour operation. Do we have um, a letter of intent or what their intent is for our operations, uh, the age group that they're targeting? Um, I see it says teen and adult. Um, like what demographics they're hoping to hit. Um, what are their ideas for parking and whatnot? So, um, if there's some, I know there's other businesses around and things like that. It gets busy during the day with the post office, but uh, all they see on our agenda is just the, the application, but actually go meet the tables as to what the intent of what they're looking at. Like, I, I understand that with um, some of the programs that happen in facilities like that, but I would like more information um, from this group as to what their intentions are specifically like 24-7, um, 365, or just Monday to Friday, like what are they looking to, to offer? And then how their operation
operations would affect the area. Do we have? I, I haven't received any demographics for, for who can and who cannot use. I think it's pretty, from what I've been told, it's open to anyone who's struggling with an addiction. Uh, the, the, the parking is street parking. And uh, what was the other question? Like, are, are they looking to have people reside there, or is it like a drop in a programming account? It's like, or, or is it going to be like a dormitory where they bring people in and they stay there while they're counseling or like what's the intent there? Now that okay, I'm just going to just hold it there for one minute. Um, Ms. Stadnick said she cannot hear anything. What, is there something that she needs to do on her end? Or does she log off and then try to come back in again? She can try, yeah. Okay. So if she can, I'll text her. Uh, I believe that Councillor White was first, so I'll let him go and then. Yeah. Well, one of the links that uh, Mr. Poole sent to us has virtually all that information. I think I got that today or yesterday. Uh, who, where, when, how, and as I understand it, it's a 24 hour day, but their freedom to move around is, is a pretty tight ship. And I, I would like to hear more from that group personally. But it's all on the links from Derek. Okay, Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor Montoni. Uh, I'll defer mine to the, uh, my questions to the end of uh, Ms. Stadnick, and then one more from the audience. Mr. Bueller, I think, wanted to speak okay. as yeah, well. Yeah, he uh, did. I'll, uh, Ms. Stadnick will have to log off, and I already sent her a text to do that. So, Mr. Bueller, if you want to come forward and, and maybe answer some of those questions or or uh, your own uh, presentation, I guess you will. May I speak after him? Sorry? May I speak again after he's done? Yes, you may. You can speak as many times as you'd like. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess, first of all, I'd like to say that um, it was, it's been very, very encouraging for me just if you if you can just maybe just state your name so everybody here knows Sorry, who you uh, are and, then, and what your relation to this is okay yeah uh, my name is don bueller and i've been involved with uh, helping the teen challenge kind of get set up in this area uh i've personally been familiar with their ministry for years uh i i would say yeah 15 years myself and a group of men have uh actually already been sponsoring guys from this area to go through their program. They have a men's rehab in Winnipeg where they're resident for a year. It's a one-year program and they have a, a women's rehab in Brandon. Uh, we've sent several people there over the past 15 years and uh, I can tell you that all of them have remained clean. Um, they have a very high success rate as somebody already mentioned. Uh, but in going around to gain support <clears throat> in the last couple of weeks for this Sled for Eternity fundraiser that they held hold here annually, done it six years now, uh, I went to you know most of the businesses in town, and as well as a lot of private people. Uh, the the support was absolutely unbelievable. The the whole business community, especially, was just I, I just kept hearing it over and over and over. We, we've got to do something <laughs> about our, our street situation. And uh, so they're, they're, when I explain to them what Teen Challenge does, what they've done in other communities and what they're proposing to do, they're going like, we're in. And so we, we, we raised, uh, we raised the $50,000 um, budgeted amount that will be needed to renovate the building uh, for, for them to use it. Now, as, as to some of the concerns that have been brought up about it being in that particular neighborhood, um, I will say that in, this, is, this is not a new concern. Uh, pretty well every, every community has that concern. I, I was met with the same concern when we were building Echo 2 and Echo 4 for CMHA. Um, in Winnipeg, the very first one that they set up, it's in Winnipeg Central Park. Uh, it's beside a church. That's, that was one of the, probably the worst street gang areas of the city. 
Did it get worse when they moved in there? No. It's been a, it's been a huge improvement for their presence to be there. Um, you know, will it? Will there be more foot traffic to and you know to and from that church because of it being there than there is now? That's possible. Uh, but I guess I would just encourage you to to think about the fact that these people that are going to this church are going there for help. They're not primarily going there to vandalize the place. They're going there to help. And it and their idea, it, what they want to set up, is a facility where people can drop in and talk to someone and find out in that conversation that there is in fact hope for them. As, as any of you know that hang around with these people, I do, uh, most of them have, have no hope in their mind that their life will ever be different. All, all they can think of is, is stealing something to get enough money for their next fix. But to think long term that I could be in a different place in a year or five years, they can't even think that far. They are, are without hope. And so their idea is to be, this is a first contact place where they can go and meet someone and talk to them and find out about the men's unit or the women's unit and find out that they could actually be referred there and sponsored. That they charge a measly thousand dollars for a full year of board and room and the program at these two places. So they, they, the only reason they even do that, because it's next to free, is if you do make it free, then it loses all its value. And so these people then have to find someone, and that's where us group of men have been in, and we just get 10 men together, and each throw in 100 bucks and say, okay, we gather around the person, we say, we've got your back. We want you to have a better life. And they go there knowing that there are men with some skin in it behind them. I say men, people, sorry. Uh, anyways, so they intend to renovate the west end of that building. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, the original church was a 61 mill. Then on 84, there was a piece added onto the west end, which was pastor's office and some classrooms and so on. That piece, they want to renovate into a suite for a married couple, a counseling couple trained to be there and to, to live there, a resident couple. Now, when we when we talk about this 24/7 uh, part, um, that simply means that they're going to be there 24/7. And if the doorbell rings at 3 a.m. and somebody wants to talk, they will let them in and they will talk to them. How much of that will go on during the night versus during the day? Who knows? Um, but that's the 24/7 part of it. They will hold street church there a couple times a week. They they are a faith-based organization. And that is one of the reasons that they tend to use church facilities like this. And that is one of the reasons why the church, Mary and Fury in particular, wanted this church to be used by someone like them so that a faith-based ministry could continue out of that building. And so it is still a, a faith-based ministry operating out of there, operating, um, operating church services and a food program and counseling. Um, in, I think, every community where they've set up, Winnipeg being the one that I cited, but also Brandon, uh, Flint Lawn, Steinbeck, Thunder Bay, wherever, they are in a primarily residential area. They just were recently gifted a huge condo in Steinbeck, twice the size of Darren McKay's three-story. Uh, and it will be a, a residence for the program where people can go and actually go through the program and live there for the year. This place will not have any beds in it for clients. It'll just simply be a, a first contact place uh, where they can be referred. Uh, so the only people living in this building will be that counseling couple. As for as for parking, uh, there's ample parking space from the back alley on the south side of the building for the, the staff couple. The clients, typically have no vehicle. And so the street parking will be more than adequate. Uh, you know, the street parking is all the church has had for 61 years for the attendees. But but the, this clientele typically has no vehicle. But that said, I did also 
have my eyes open during um, my fundraising for them to know that this this problem of addiction in our community is way bigger than just our teens and our street people. I will say that. I heard story after story from business people uh, who have it in their families, in their homes. We're not talking just street people going to this place. It's anybody that has already come to the conclusion that they can't beat their addiction on their own. And I will say, because I have permission from my son to say this, our son, a year ago, February of last year, came to us and said, Dad, Mom, I'm addicted. We had no idea. He's been in the oil field for about 15, 17 years, stayed clean for about 10 of that, but in the last six years, I guess he just gradually got drawn into it. And he could not win over it. He had tried and tried and tried, and he would vow that he was not going to again, and two days later, he'd do it again. And uh, that, is, that is the grip that addiction has. And he went to a, a faith-based uh, rehab in Alberta. I had to go and attend the last three sessions with him. That was one of the requirements. And he is clean since November. But uh, I'm, I'm here to say that this facility will not just serve our street people. I believe that anybody has, that has the humility and the desperation, whether they're from the street or whether they're a prominent business person, when they go to that building, they can find somebody to talk to and find hope. That's, that's their intent. So I think that the overall effect for the town, even though it may increase some traffic to and from that building, the overall effect for the, for the town will be a huge increase. It can only help. That's my, that's my thought. It has proven to do that in every other community they've been in. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for, uh, for all that information. And the property is zoned appropriately for this usage. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Dvorak, I believe, wanted to speak again. Can you need to state my name again? Nope. No, good. Um, we know who you are now. <clears throat> good. I don't have a big, sad story to share, um, but I do understand the brain science behind addictions, and I do know that we're all looking for a solution, and it sounds good. It sounds great on paper. Wonderful. But I'm also somebody who works with people every day, day in and out with addictions. I've worked in child welfare, and I've seen, I came into the field thinking I could change the world. I could help everybody, I could make a difference, I could make it a better place. And it ain't that easy. It's not as simple as just setting up a place to sit down and chat. The, the, that sounds great, and I noticed that none of you are offering your personal private properties up for this wonderful idea. So I think that changes everything. And so, I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I think your tune might change if it was literally <clears throat> next door to your house, not your business, because it would benefit you as a business, but your personal property where you live, where you sleep, where you go home to, quite frankly, get away from the people that you're working with all day like that. So my question is, what's your goal for the neighborhood? Like, are you trying to drive out professionals that want some sort of quality of life and some sort of peace, if that's your goal? then I guess proceed, because that's what's going to happen. Thank you. Councilor White. Can I speak to you, please? Oh, yes. Yeah, go ahead then. Um, I, I, I've listened to all the, all the, the, the people that have spoken, and, and I, again, reiterate that it's a really good idea. I just don't think that it should be in a residential area, and I, and, um, I think that if each of the councillors look at their house, where their house is, and wherever you are living, you do not want that next to your house, okay? 
It doesn't matter if these people are just coming just for counseling. It's the traffic and it's the people that we are trying to avoid. And as I said, is um, we're trying to escape from certain things and our house is our safe place. And I know the property was bought for the specific reason, but there's other properties that are sitting empty in our town in better locations that is not residential, that could be used for specifically this, and even specifically for people to sleep over, to actually have a place where they can sleep and eat and be loved, but not in a residential area. Thank you. Thank you. Council, what you had something? Uh, Mr. Mueller, I just uh, query. When I read the, uh, the descriptor, the link, it talked about 8 o'clock, 8.05, 8.10, it was pretty well documented activity. So that's not going to, that link isn't accurate then. This is going to be more a come and go for private, private uh, whatever, counseling, one-on-one? -on -one. Uh, you may have read a link to one of their facilities where they have residents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this one will not have residents. Okay. It will be a referral a point where they get referred from here to either Brandon or Winnipeg. Okay. Okay, so they're not stating that that was a big question. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bobbick. Hi, I'm Mr. Bueller. Has there been other locations looked at? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, but I will say this, that um, when I was speaking with Ron Wiki about the zoning part of it, had that church been a block closer to Main Street, you know, less, less in the residential area, we couldn't have done this there because then the resident couple, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow for residents residents in the in the facility so you have to be you have to be in a residential area enough that the res, that the resident counseling couple can live there um, you know, had we been where the united church if we, if we were going to try to go into the united church we couldn't do it we have to be into the residential area for them to go to live there go ahead so the way it works is that, that the counselors need to be at this one location at all times so somebody can come and see them whenever they're needed. It's not something that you can have a satellite office of somewhere else. No, they want, they're, they're, they're looking for that personal comment, that personal connection. You know. So they will, they will live there. You know. That's sort of their model. That's what they do in the other satellite offices that they have. <coughs> Outside of Brandon, okay. Thank you. So, so I guess the question is: Is there any entity in our community where the counselors could stay in that building and not be residential and provide the service to those who are obviously very much in need? Mr. Cool. Sorry, can you repeat that? I was. Pardon? I was marking my minutes down. Could you repeat that? Is there a, a, a property in our community which isn't zoned residential, which appears to be the kicker, so they can stay in there and provide 24-hour service to their clients? I, I would have to. Mr. Harvey? That was one of the things in the zoning uh, review, because <clears throat> uh, in the commercial, it's multiple family dwellings with or with, I would associate commercial uses. And that was one of the things was to have uh, single family with associated uses so that'll be coming before council um, but currently no like currently in the commercial it's multi family not single family with associated just to finish that uh, who wouldn't want to help those people that are, they're in need most importantly and then there's the crime and there's the other stuff that goes with it but I'm hoping to find some Middle grounds where they can, the councils can stay and, and, and solve the concerns, which are legitimate, I believe, of uh, my bosses sitting in here. Any further discussion? Well, where my parents live is a commercial well, where they live. That's still considered commercial, and there's houses there. They could buy a house on that street. And run the business. But all the 
the whole road all the way to night are all houses and and then do whatever. Anything further? Okay. Well, uh, I do thank. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Bueller. Well, it's just going to say that um, from from their per perspective, for the, for the type of ministry that they hope to offer and do offer in other places, the church is ideal. In that, the the, the, the original church part will remain no, with no renovations. They can still hold their church services in the sanctuary. They can still run their food program in the basement, and then have the resident couple in the in the addition part of the West End. So, uh, you know, their model being a faith-based operation and having a, a church to hold it in is ideal. Go ahead, Ms. Ashcroft. Um, food, as in they're going to be holding luncheons and things there, so we go there. It's supposed to be one person at a time. Oh, no, no. It, the, the, it's not the one person at a time always. Uh, when you go for counseling, you you know, like they go by yourself. But yeah, they well, if they have a meal, you know, if they have a Wednesday noon meal or something, then it would be open to all of those clients. So then all these people are going there, whatever. Go ahead. Um, I, 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 two items, I guess, questions that I have. Um, my first one being, I, I guess there would have been, it would have been great to have representation from the organization to speak to answer more of the questions, but um, just wondering for um, both, both sides who are uh, for, and for and against, um, prior to coming to the public hearing and, and asking the questions that are being asked, was there any consultation with the group themselves to find out exactly what was coming to um, or concern that what was coming uh, from that group is, is one question that I have. Um, the second piece, I do believe um, that the, the facility, the space itself was gifted to the organization um, for this particular reason. I'm not sure if that's accurate or inaccurate, but uh, those are two pieces that I wanted, would like to know, and unfortunately there isn't somebody representing that uh, on behalf of them, unless that's Mr. Bueller, unless that's you representing on behalf of the organization. You know, I, I am part of their local committee, and so they asked me to represent them. Uh, well, maybe it would have been better if one of the bigger one from Winnipeg was here. But in terms of, yes, they were gifted the building for a dollar. They took possession January 1. Um, what was the other question? Oh, were there any people that approached us beforehand to give clarification as to what the intent was and all that? Uh, Sean Charlebois uh, did a couple days ago, and we've arranged to meet tomorrow morning. I'm not sure if he's for or against it. Uh, he just wanted to talk to me about it. He's, that operates the Redwood Compass. <coughs> that was it. Councilor Bobbick. Ms. Gaborak? Do you need me to get up? No, you're fine. Okay. As long as you, you speak loud enough that okay. we can all hear you. Um, so Sean does live right across the road from the church, so I can see why he would have some questions other than just well, having the Redwood Compass on the same street. Um, I did my own research and I actually have worked with multiple people who've uh, been involved with Team Challenge. For some people it was great, for some people it was terrible. So I mean just like anything else, I don't think it's the magic silver bullet that's going to fix everything in this community. Um, so I, yeah, <coughs> it sound, it, like I said, it sounds great on paper, absolutely, but um, when you work with these populations, you start to understand that there's a lot more to it, and it's not quite that simple of a fix. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Bobby? I was just Oh, okay. Is there anything further? <clears throat> uh, I, think, uh, point. I think if we give up these people, you know, we say we don't want to do any security stuff. 
we give up our town. So we have to help these people. As we can live maybe a, in, a, in one of us, but one day they will get to your house. So you should help them now, not uh, wait till uh, you stay. So am I under the impression that there is areas in town that meets all the requirements right now? There is. There is. Single family residential areas. Mr. Ashcroft. In all the people we spoke to on our block, there isn't one person on that street that doesn't agree to the, the function of what they want to do and what they want to achieve and what this community needs as far as that. We're totally behind that, absolutely 100%. Just not there, just not on our street. It's as simple as that. Like we don't need to be painted as the people that don't want to help and the mean street and all that. Not that, no way. We just, you know, there's gotta be, as you, as you councilors have said, there's gotta be locations somewhere else in town. And I get the fact that they got the building and everything cheap, and that's what uh, that's what a charity or that kind of organization, <coughs> any organization, would would relish is to have a facility like that for that price, and that's great. God bless them. But as I say, don't misconstrue our our trepidation over not wanting to help people, because that's not the story. The story is what, and you know, it's kind of glazed over here. Oh, there'd be a bit of traffic here. No, oh, give me a bit of traffic. And that's the type of traffic that bothers me. And that's, so like I say, don't, you know, don't paint us with that brush that we don't care. Because we care, but not on my street. Mr. Borat. Just to add to that, since I've been back in 2012, all my husband and I have done is help. He's a child protection worker. I was a child protection worker. I'm a therapist. He's worked as a proctor with people with severe mental health issues. That's all we've done is helped. That's it. We helped and helped and helped and helped. And like Mr. Ashcroft said, like I don't appreciate the idea that I'm now going to potentially be construed as somebody who doesn't help when I feel I've helped more than most people will ever help. Um, maybe one more point. I think um, Mr. Pula said, I think the addiction is deeper than we think. It's not just those people where we say we go around them and don't want to even see them. I think there's people in our community who are dressed proper, who drive a proper car, who have a house maybe, or they kind of on the edge to losing it, but they have problems. So we should not think just in one direction to see those people. It might be also like any other therapy, you know, couple therapies or whatever, right? Where just regular, no, let's say normal people could go in and get help. It could be even one of our children or one of our brothers, sisters or Whatever, right? We do not know who is struggling. Sometimes we even don't know what's in our closest friendship community happens, right? So just think about that as well, I think. Okay, thank you. Back to you. Just one more point. If anyone who believes in it that strongly, I urge you to volunteer to put it on your property then. If that's, if you're that, behind it, then please, you do have it at your house. That, that's, that's okay. If you need parking spots, you can park at our business. Right? Your house. Yeah, sure. Your house. So we're not, we, we don't yeah. want to get into a uh, debate. You know, we, you heard the comments. Um, we're going to have to close the hearing because we do have other things to move on with. Uh, I'm thinking that council has heard that obviously people in this room would overwhelming say that it would be a service that would be good to the community but we also hear from the residential area homeowners that are opposed to it so this is something that council is going to have to uh, take the time and, and review and, and debate and consider all your points that you've presented so with that 
Um, if anybody else has any last comments, otherwise I'm going to proceed to uh, adjourn. <clears throat> anybody from council? Okay. Oh, sorry. I just, uh, on behalf of myself, thank everybody for joining in with uh, a public hearing. Um, often we have public hearings that don't bring out um, as many uh, ratepayers as we have today. So um, whether you were for or whether you were against, that's not what uh, I'm here to thank you for. I'm here to thank you and, and for sharing your concerns with council and, and being brave enough to come in and speak your, your point of view. And I truly appreciate that and, and hope that that can be done more in the future when public hearings are held. So thank you to each and every one of you. Anybody thank you. else? Thank you, Councilor, okay. for your time. Yeah, so yes, thank you guys and, and ladies and gentlemen that have come in tonight and uh, you'll hear the results uh, more on this. Result the public hearing for conditional use 1 2022 be closed and further the regular meeting of council be resumed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. We'll go back to regular meeting 6 6.1. Yes. <clears throat> Result the building permits one to sorry one to twenty two through three twenty two was a with a total estimated value of one hundred ninety five thousand dollars be received moved by Councilor Baldick seconded by Deputy Mayor Lentoni all in favor it's carried <coughs> just had one question though. <coughs> uh, when it's a demolition is it always is the value always zero when it's a demolition of a property yeah the value is uh what you've added so when you demolish something okay you gain value. thank you okay. seven seven point one result of the director of public works report be received moved by councillor door or councillor white second by councillor friesen discussion councillor white just a query how are we doing with our uh, well, they ask our, our snowplow budget. Uh, it's going to be high for this amount of time. It does include next fall to December. So we're, we're so early into the year, it's hard to say at this point. It kind of depends on the remainder of this year, or yeah. this winter and next winter. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 7.2. Result of the fire chief's report be received. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by uh, Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, uh, 7.4, 7.3, 7.4, uh, Council and CEO reports. We'll start with Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Nothing like putting me on the spot. Um, I don't believe I have uh, anything to share. I didn't, don't recall. Maybe something will come to me, but. Uh, at this time, I don't recall any uh, any meetings that I had, so I have nothing, Your Worship. Okay. Councillor Friesen? I don't either. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morio? Uh, a couple meetings. Uh, last week on Wednesday, the General Government Committee met. And, uh, we discussed uh, the ongoing negotiation with uh, his colleague, Minnetonis Bozeman. So we're waiting to hear uh, uh, there's a date and time when we can meet with them to continue the discussions uh, for our purchase service uh, agreements with them. Um, on Friday, um, Mr. Poole, Mr. Baldwin, and myself, we met with the RCMP to discuss uh, some of the issues and ongoing issues that we had with them. We reviewed uh, some sections of the uh, uh, our 
service contract with them where we uh, identified a number of deliverables that we uh, formally presented to them and expect to have some uh, feedback and results of uh, how they're achieving those and if they've met the, the deliverable or not and some of the shortcomings um, on a more formal basis with them to make them more accountable to uh, the contract that we have with them. Um, we also discussed some of the other issues with staffing where we uh, looked at various op options that will be discussed in our uh, next town hall meeting and the town on notice. Um, then last Tuesday, we met as a committee of the whole. And on last Thursday, the 10th, um, Council White, uh, Mr. Poole, and myself, we met with uh, representatives from Prairie Mountain Health for the uh, their normally annual shared uh, or pardon me, stakeholders meeting, um, where a number of issues were uh, discussed with them, uh, most particularly um, the CT scanner and their, their support, which uh, we were uh, told that Prairie Mountain Health supports our endeavors um, to have a CT scanner located in the health center here in Swan River. Uh, other issues that were brought forward for discussion and continue to work on with them was uh, um, professional staffing levels, particularly nurses and EMS. Um, we also discussed the possibility of seeing the potential if we get a primary care paramedic uh, training program locally here in Swan River, along with uh, trying to uh, get the ball rolling a little faster on an LPN to be in a bridging program here located in the valley. Um, I believe that was a lot of the biggest things that we had at that meeting. It was a very well um, received meeting. Um, a lot of good dialogue back and forth there where it was uh, a breath of fresh air from uh, my point of view on those types of meetings. So that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to. Uh, meet with Paramount Health. I was not able to attend that, and I know that was a really important meeting with the um, the CEO of uh, Prairie Mountain Health. So uh, I look forward to having a chance to meet with him the next time around, but yeah, thank you for taking the time for doing that. Councillor Bobbitt. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor Pete. Uh, February 2nd at the Protective Service meeting here. Uh, Preluded into the meeting on uh, February 4th with the RCP as Councillor Mario spoke on. Uh, lots of ongoing things there. Uh, uh, February 8th did Council of the Whole uh, also uh, has conversations with the rate payers of the snow dumping sites. We've been talking with the CAO and uh, Mr. Harvey over that. We have a meeting uh, tentatively for uh, Thursday, which we'll be going over some of the future. What we're going to do with snow dumping sites, also some specifications of some uh, equipment that we'll be now looking at in the future. Uh, also, I have a meeting uh, Thursday night in the watershed. I uh, will we'll be approaching this with Mr. Harvey and see if we'll uh, briefly on renting their grizzly or maybe storing it for a um, long week. So, that's something for the staff can do. So, I'll approach them about that and get back to you. Uh, also, I really appreciate the, the Facebook page that the fire department's put on there. I think that's a really great idea. I like to see it. It shows that they're out and about. And a very good description. So kudos to them for doing that. I, I know that's something that's uh, really good. Um, other than that, just crime in town. We will be moving forward with that. Thank you. What does that mean? And so why? Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, on the 7th, uh, I attended a uh, Zoom seminar with the Province of Manitoba on Homelessness, and there were some really interesting numbers that jumped up uh, at us. Uh, for example, in Winnipeg, there's 1,519 homeless persons. In Swan River, we have roughly 90 plus or minus all the time, and on any given day in the evenings, there's 20 to 30 people looking for a place to sleep. At least don't appear to be making the couch surfing. So there's a lot of issues in there, so uh, they'll follow up with us. And, uh, uh, we, uh, just, it's disturbing that people are living that life and have no control over it. 
Uh, then they went to an LP open house uh, on the 7th. And, and, and the concept is coming up that some of those trees are going down with different diseases before they can harvest them. And it'd be, it's unfortunate, but uh, it'd be nice to use all those trees. The cow, uh, the cow seminar on the 8th, uh, leading from that, as, as uh, other cows has alluded to, crime being an issue. And I want to compliment uh, the mayor and uh, Mr. Poole, who will be on GX94 radio tomorrow at 720. CJ 104. CJ 104, thank you. I was one of those CJ things. So those who are listening uh, tonight, hopefully turn on the radios tomorrow at 7.20 and hear our, our leaders talk about the things that the council is doing, working hard towards and it hasn't stopped. On the February the 9th, I was in Dauphin for a PMH tour and the one thing that jumped up, the uh, staffing is big obviously, but uh, they, they were They've got 30 million, whatever the number was, to reconfigure their colonoscopy uh, beds. And I immediately said, oh, well, we're not going to get our surgeons coming here doing the colonoscopies and the, and the surgeries. But they uh, promised me that that wasn't true. There's still so many people that need them and they will continue to need them so we don't have to do it. Uh, staffing with huge concern, plus or minus 30% and PMH right now short of nurses and nursing aides. Then on the 10th, uh, PMH uh, met here in Swan River, the board members, the CEO, Mr. Schoenbart. I want to thank uh, Mr. Poole and uh, Mr. Mario for attending. And I'm going to get heck. It was nice to see three counselors at that, that meeting and uh, some community reps and the MLA. But I, I get saddened when people criticize that, which we do for doctor recruiting, medical pro processes, CT scan. And our council compliments to those of you who could make it was the only council represented there. So that's disheartening to me. Uh, what else? This is the PMH. Uh, then we did our HR meeting on the 11th. And what has come out is number one issue is obviously recruiting. And the message they gave us is we can all recruit. We know somebody that might go into nursing. We know somebody that might go into medicine. We should be talking to our family and friends. And equally as important, we have all these young doctors and nurses and healthcare aides in town. If they're not a local person, not raised, we should be inviting them up for dinner. We should invite them to our service clubs. We should take them fishing. Make them part of our community. So I, I think that's so huge. Uh, then on February the 12th, uh, medical professional I met with, uh, yo, that, that didn't happen. Today we were supposed to have a meeting. But a bunch of other meetings stepped up, so I want to compliment the mayor and team for uh, raising that. We'll be meeting with Dr. Burnside and others about how to recruit, who to recruit, and some of the programs we have. And then tomorrow, uh, the mayor has also arranged a meeting with uh, the, the Minister of Municipal Relations, uh, Minister Thursday. Clark. Thursday. Is that tomorrow? No, Thursday. Pardon? The next day. Thursday. It's Thursday, that meeting. But thank you for, if it's wrong, it's Thursday at uh, 5 o'clock at the Western Forum Council members and invited guests. So thank you, Your Worship, for setting that up. And we'll be here, I guarantee you, about uh, the CT scan. I think that's about it. We need to recruit. We all can. And uh, lots of meetings this last week. And if I knew how to work a computer, they would have gone a lot faster. Thank you. Uh, for me, I guess uh, you all had the meeting, town meeting last week, where you actually dedicated most of your meeting to the budget. So I had a chance to review that. Uh, what you all seen last uh, week, I seen that yesterday. So uh, uh, we're on the way to uh, getting our, our budget established. Uh, there's a lot of other questions that need to be answered, but we'll be working on that in, in the coming weeks. <clears throat> on the crime part, it's 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 disheartening and 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 you know uh, we talk to community people and they're frustrated and we're frustrated we're dealing with it we, we we hear probably more than what some people hear and 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 we're trying to come up with solutions or not necessarily solutions but working with others that can help to make some of those solutions and it's not an easy thing and yes we uh, did an interview with um, CJ 104 today uh, to discuss that and, and to bring it to the forefront to the community people to hear that we are, we do care and we are working on this and it's not something really easy and there is no somebody mentioned in our public hearing 
there's no silver bullet. And uh, this is going to take time, but we have to start someplace in, in our uh, meeting that we're going to have on crime is, is coming up. We have a tentative date set. We've got some other things to work on with that yet, but uh, we're proceeding with that. The meeting will be tough. It will be, that will be a really, really tough meeting for us to have to go through, but we have to go through it. The community is, is, is aching with this, and it's time for us to, to uh, share and, and, and discuss what we're dealing with. And it's, it's not easy, and as we had the, our discussion with the radio station this morning, there's so many things that, you know, when you talk to each other, you, you hear the different things that's happening, and, you know, and I, I don't care if it's one petty crime or if it's somebody getting shot, we don't want this stuff happening in our community, and we need to start working on how we're going to turn this around. And I know we hear some other communities saying, yes, we're dealing with the same things. And, you know, uh, I hate saying that, I'm, and, I hate, and I'm not going to say that because um, we as a community need to work on that and, and with our solutions ourselves and with our community people. I have been reaching out to the Minister of Justice, uh, MLA Wochuk, on having a meeting with uh, the minister. And I know people say, you're having meetings after meetings after meetings. But you know what? It takes a long time, and uh, and and it's it's not easy. But we have to work with the, our provincial government and, and uh, municipal partners on how we're going to work together to solve some of these issues. And uh, like I said, it's not going to be easy. We are having a meeting with the Minister of Municipal Affairs here on Thursday. Uh, there are going to be some things that we're going to discuss to her. She's kind of like the bridge, you know, with the Mysterio and with the uh, Premier, as well as uh, MLA Wocha. But we need to get her here, and we need to talk to her about some of these really severe problems and issues that we need help. And uh, we'll be working with that in, in the in the coming weeks ahead. So that's a big part of, of mine. Um, like I said, I've been reaching out to some of the ministers, and thankfully we got... Minister Clark coming to uh, having a, uh, a fairly large, I guess, meeting with her because normally we only get maybe a half an hour with a minister, and here we're going to have about two hours to have this discussion. And we'll have Emily Wochuk in the room as well. So we'll be working on that uh, a little bit later on in the evening as far as our agenda, and uh, we'll make sure that we have all those points ready for the minister because we want to have a good, fruitful discussion on on the issues that we're dealing with, and not necessarily only crime, CT scanners, so all the kind of things, and how we can uh, build those bridges with the new ministers and so forth. So uh, I think that was it for myself, Councilor White. Yeah, just, uh, I missed a point that I thought was pretty important, a letter here from the CEO of uh, Fairmont Health. He says, the physician model in Swan River has been recognized as a gold standard, has been replicated elsewhere in the province. Many times with recruitment in healthcare, we hear the lack of housing and access to babysitting prohibit recruiting. So, so we've got to find some housing, some babysitting supplies, but a gold standard for recruiting. That's a real compliment from the top person at PMH. The other thing uh, you forgot to mention, Your Worship, is that in your plans, one of the things that we may be doing is meeting with the senior crown attorney in Dauphin. If we have to go down there, we'll go there uh, to, to let them explain how, how serious this is to our community. And we've done that bus before with the crime issue and uh, got us at the, the senior crown's uh, attention. And punishment was significant in that person. Uh, it's had to have something to do with our meeting. <laughs> I think we have to meet with the guys who uh, make the rules more often. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to report. Um, and I'll, I guess with that crime, we're, we uh, have a discussion or a presentation to the community uh, on. Uh, town on notice but I think maybe you might want to touch on that in your report so I'll uh, pass it off to uh, Mr. Cool. Uh Yeah in addition to <clears throat> the meetings I attended with Councillor Morio that he touched on we did launch the the crime version of town on notice in the paper on the radio station and on our social media platforms and in addition to that interview uh, with the radio station uh, we'll be playing tomorrow. So I think I think that's a good start, uh, especially for the, the whole town on notice program. I think maybe 
that'll boost it in the future when we have something to say people will listen. Uh, the next, just so council knows, the next one is scheduled to to uh, advertise our strategic plan, which I brought the finished booklets today. Uh, I guess in, in other words, uh, compiling mutual aid information for the the next G4 meeting, uh, responding to budget questions and. I guess preparing for the, the upcoming changes in, in budget, uh, reviewing the Elections Act uh, to make sure that we, we go through the general election uh, with no hitches, and uh, everything for the Antonis you know, Bozeman Shared Services meeting is prepared. We just need that meeting date. And that, that's about it. I guess uh, additionally for myself, uh, I had spoke with the Lee Pasternak uh, from Minnetonans Bozeman on uh, purchase services, and so they are working on a date, and hopefully we'll have that soon. I know that Mr. Waldner has been communicating with their office, and we're waiting for that uh, that date to come out of it. The other thing on the crime thing that we talked about this morning, and I think it's important for everybody else here too, is to relate to the to the people in the community. If there's crime, it doesn't matter what type of crime it is, you should always be reporting it talk about these stats and people get tired of stats and all that but that's some of the things that help us help the RCMP and with government and so forth the every little bit of crime doesn't matter how and what it is if we see it we need to be reporting that crime and we need to make sure we're telling our friends and our neighbors and, and who's talking in the coffee shops report every bit of crime it might be somewhat uh, taking some time to to report it, but it's it's our obligation, and we should be we should be doing what we need to do, and uh, and we recognize that we have a crime issue, and uh, and these are some of the things that we need to help to uh, build the steps to find the proper help to uh, build ourselves out of this. <clears throat> I did forget to mention that uh, I did nail down the moderator for the town hall meeting. And so March 10th, that's a Thursday, that is the tentative date for the town hall meeting. We'll be looking at uh, tomorrow morning. The staff sergeant already knows the tentative date and uh, I will contact Deputy Mayor and Tony, I'm guessing is the rep for from COP, COPP, but we did talk about that as a panelist. But, What's the time? Uh, the time? The time hasn't been set. I was hoping to get that done uh, Later today, but the camera or that's fine. Yeah, so we'll get it sorted out. Yeah. yeah, we're on our way. Okay, very good. So moving on, eight to do business a re, to allow a religious institution that offers counseling services in an RS slash dash five zone be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by. Councilor Bobby, discussion. Councilor White. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd like to uh, table this to the topic until uh, I personally get a little more information, and uh, perhaps Mr. Uh, Mueller can can talk to uh, Serial uh, Pool and see if there are other options. Second to approve uh, table. Councilor Bobby, all in favor. Councillor Morio, I didn't see if you voted or not. Pardon? I was opposed to the motion. Okay. <laughs> it's it's uh, it was uh, a tie, so it's defeated. Councillor Bobbitt. Uh, just to speak a bit on this, uh, I think the Teen Challenge is a great thing. It would be great for the community. It's really needed. I think it's so valuable that it could be put in a different location. That is, I think the community should get together, find a spot to these things, in the proper spot. And as the rep, great pair said, there everybody's for this, but at the same time, it is a residential. So I think it's a challenge for us as a council 
who try to help these people find something that fits their niche to get this into our community. So as right now, I will be voting against that. Council White. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, CO Poole will have the opportunity to talk to uh, Mr. Bueller. And I, and I agree with all, all of us. I think we, we agree that we need this. Uh, we need some opportunity for those people to get healthy. Anything further? Go ahead. Uh, so just to be clear, the motion to um, table was defeated, correct? Okay. So um, in speaking with this, and I think that uh, there's no doubt that there are going to be ratepayers upset no matter where it's put, no matter what area it's going to be, there will be ratepayers that are upset where it is. And I completely understand it. It was no different than um, um, when CMHA was building the Echo Apartments uh, on that side of town in a wide open field, there was still opposition about it. Um, again, you know, it's it's up to council to make those decisions and decide if conditional uses are appropriate or not appropriate and um, to determine whether or not um, you know, the, the effects are going to be that, that are stated. Um, I think that when some of the ratepayers, there's a perceived notion of what this will bring to the community. Um, and for, for us to um, stand in the way, I'm not sure that that's the, a place for us in terms of the religious aspect that they have. I mean, it, it, we've, uh, we've allowed a church there to be for 61 years. If it's not, we perhaps don't worship the same church that's there, but we have it there. And um, in terms of traffic, I, there's no doubt about it. There will be traffic. But what if it was a church that, uh, you know, that we didn't worship and there was traffic there too. So. There's two sides to the coin. I think that uh, I know that the Battle Team Challenge um, offers a lot of different resources. This one in particular, their model is much different than what you are seeing and what you're reading in terms of Winnipeg and Brandon. Um, this one's on a smaller scale. It, it's working together with the, the business consortium, the task force. There's a whole lot of entities that are already working with this organization to ensure that they're achieving outcomes um, in terms again of traffic you have on the same street further up um, would be uh, not even a full block that you have the same same drop-in center that happens um, in the evenings three four times a month so again i'm going to say it and i'm going to say it um, no matter where it's put, we will have ratepayers, not these ratepayers, but in another location, you'll have other ratepayers saying the exact same thing. Nobody ever wants, will say that they ever want this type of thing. Um, we monitor it as, you know, the best we can with our bylaws. We ensure that we're supporting um, organizations to support them and we need to give something a try. And yes, there is no silver bullet when it comes to anything with crime and addiction. And I get that, I fully support that. <coughs> but if we don't make decisions soon to help individuals, we're not helping anybody. That's my piece. My Council question Friesen. is, uh, if it's defeated, what happens? Then they can't build, they can't put that in. That's it. We're not going to help them find anything. There's, you know what? Actually, there's, <clears throat> there's something else that's, you know, with this that I think that we should reserve for in camera, <clears throat> and then come out and vote after. That we can't really discuss right now. I think that we should have that discussion in camera. I'm okay. Council Morial, did you want to speak on that before? I just, I think I that. 
there's a piece of it that, that we need to talk about in camera. Okay, uh, well, I'll, I'll say my piece here in open forum first. Okay. Uh, I've listened to both sides. Uh, absolutely, it uh, sounds like no one's against it. Uh, everybody's saying that we have a crime issue in Swan River. Uh, and we need to start working to uh, bring things forward and how to mitigate this forward and addictions. Uh, I am going to go out and live here and say probably 100% is driven by addictions. Uh, <laughs> this is one program that looks like it's looking to take a stab or, or uh, bad choice of words there, take an attempt to uh, address addictions. Uh, I can speak uh, quite frankly that addictions uh, affects more people than what a large number of people think it does. It's not only the uh, people or the less fortunate that we see walking around with backpacks in the town. Uh, it affects everybody. It affects every family in the valley. Uh, I will go out and then says that people deny that. Uh, they have their heads in the sand. Uh, there could be people on this meeting that have addictions. Who knows? It affects everybody. So the, to uh, the arguments that say, I don't want it in my backyard because I don't want these clientele walking around at different hours of the night. You don't know who it is. These people can be walking around, like one gentleman said, with a suit and tie and have a full business. Uh, you just don't know who these are. And um, in that general area, there's there's other business in there. Like it, there's the uh, the funeral home that's right across, basically right across the street. Um, there's another business just up you know, the street across the highway. That's on a major route. It's it's a it's a business area already. Like it's residential. It's it's just a weird area. The post office is on the same block across the street. It's busy Monday to Friday as it is. Um, I get the arguments that you know you work in positions and then you want to go home to your safe home with our haven um, um, to be away from things and stuff like that. But, uh, as Councilor or Deputy Mayor Tony said, uh, no matter any selection or uh, property that's identified in the community, there's going to be a number of people saying, "I don't want it in my backyard," but anywhere else but my backyard. Uh, unfortunately. Town is only so big, and you can't put it out in the middle of nowhere because then it's not going to get used. So, um, I understand there's some challenges like a residential of people staying there and things like that. So, but uh, we have to start somewhere in how to address crime and addressing the addictions. And if there's an organization that's looking to come forward um, with us, that's that try and make an attempt at uh, solving some of those issues. And most particularly, if it's not coming at a cost or significant cost to the town, why aren't we going for it? I'll reserve my decision um, after we have the in-camera piece. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Wintoy. I just, uh, I want to uh, explain a couple or a couple more pieces um, in regards to um, addictions, mental health, uh, support services. If we look at uh, the same type of situation that they're looking at helping those who are addicted, um, you don't have to look much further down. Another block is, uh, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought, is the... Um, AFM? Yes, the, the AFM, addiction, the uh, alcohol, what, Mr. Morio, help me out. I had it on the tip of my tongue, and now I've got nothing. Um, on on uh, Sixth Avenue, where my old restaurant used to be, there is the yeah. Addictions Foundation of Manitoba AFM. Thank you. AFM is right there. Um, same same argument could be for the library. The library offers programming late into the evening, or did offer programming late into the evening. You know, there is a facility right there close to that one, no different than uh, our CMHA building currently that has where it is, there's residential right above it. 
um, in the same facility. Um, and for us to make assumptions that there will be all this foot traffic at 24 hours a day, I don't think that's a fair assumption. We need to see what it brings, monitor it, and again, as uh, I stated, support other agencies to help support something in our community. Okay, so then we'll uh, we'll discuss it, rest in camera, and then come out of camera and vote on it. <clears throat> 8.2, town on notice. Uh, this was intended to be in the communication section, so there's no resolution. It's for council to see the, the crying piece of the town. Okay, 8.3, result of the Town of Swan River Cell, Lots 4, 5, 6, Lot 1, Plan 24350 to Darcy Row for $20,000. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wontoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Go ahead. Just for <clears throat> uh, Council's information, these lots are, are located directly south of Hayes School. So they're, they're, if everyone knows where the ACL building is, there's five residential lots uh, south of the school, but directly east of the ACL. These are the, the furthest east three that he's looking for, or offering us. The assessed value per lot is $10,900. Uh, so that's 32.7 would be our assessed value on these lots. Mr. O has indicated that he is not going to run his taxi operation off of these properties. It will be for his private dwelling and garage, and he fully intends on amalgamating the three lots into one. Okay, Councilor Morio. Um, Mr. Poole, did he have given any indication of what he's looking to do construction on those? Uh, yes, he plans on getting concrete in as soon as the thaw is out in 2023. Okay, so within the, 2022, so within, uh, okay, within the, the two year time frame that we normally offer the municipal developer type discount, right? Yes, he's aware of the agreement, he's seen it, and he's willing to to sign it uh, if, he, if we move forward with the sale. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Friesen and Councillor Bond. I just, uh, is this a uh, time picture? From the trailer court, right? No. From the trailer court? No. Not the trailer court, the Green Acres. Yes, yes. yes. North okay. there. North? North of Green Acres. South of Hayes School. Okay, south of Hayes School and north of the, yeah, okay. Where's Hayes? Okay. Where's the Wall uh, Island? I'm just tired. I don't know why, because I've been here since five. Okay, it's just a Anybody eat supper today? Thank you. You're welcome. Have lunch. Uh, did you get, okay, you're good. How's your Uh, Just, uh, I'm looking for CAO's close uh, recommendation. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of interest in these lots. We, we did have uh, one person be interested in, in the, one of those lots probably five years ago. And that, you know, since I've been here, which is 12 years, that's interest, you know, one person interested in one lot and, you know, they ended up not putting in an offer. So I, I got to say there is no interest in these lots. I am. My personal uh, views is that we, we get out of the land owning business. I, I'm fully in support of that. And if he's willing to put a dwelling on these and amalgamate and make a very big yard, garage, tree it up, why can't we give him what he wants? Uh, if there's no other interest, no other offers, they've been for sale for years, they're on our lots for sale now. Yes, as long as he signs the agreement that he gets at the lockup stage within two years, I would sell his lines. So the water and sewers have been done, I don't know what here and there, but has, am I under the impression that every lot is stuffed on or not? 
Yep. On these properties, there is services to the property line on all three. On all three, so two of those will never be used. That's correct. I was going to actually ask that question, but good, good question. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, I'll ask the question. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10.1 Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28568 to number 28618 totaling 94,489.49 as listed on schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5032 to number 5038 totaling $108,697.70 as listed on schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $22,122.59 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, check number 28572 to Atkinson Contracting. Um, are we getting reimbursed for that or is that? part of our contributions, I guess, Gila, towards that project. What was the number? Uh, 28572, that's the, the uh, canteen at the Legion Park for water sewer services. Uh, no, that was the uh, prior rec director uh, that's no longer with us that made the decision that uh, <clears throat> Sorry, you broke up there, so we paid for it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas sections 3. 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306.1 provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba of Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by the Manitoba of Assessment Services on February 8, 2022 be made to the business tax roll with the resulting increases totaling $94.87 and the resulting reductions totaling $1,036.29. Moved by Councillor Bobbitt, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Result that the following unpaid utility accounts be added to the corresponding property tax rolls and notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amount being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the same amount in the same manner as unpaid property taxes effective March the 1st, 2022. Utility account number 21080000.03 $384.71. That's tax roll 101 0086000.000. Tax roll number 25 3000.000. 3205000.01. $425.20. Tax Rule number 0061 000.000.0002, utility account amount $513.68. Tax rule number 0141500.000, totaling amount $6,235.02. Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor White. 
how does somebody who owe us, if I took this correctly, for $5,000, how do they get into us for $5,000? We have bills. Go ahead. That's from uh, the COVID, and they didn't uh, pay their bills the whole COVID time. That's, a re that's just been for two years, they haven't paid a bill? Different man with Tony? That was my uh, exact question. I forgot uh, about the COVID. Our uh, policy on, thank you, on COVID. Go ahead. And uh, in these cases, the ones that accrue the bill are the ones that are property owners. So it's not like the tenant accrued the bill and it's going to the owner. In these cases, it's all the owners that own the properties. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11 bylaws, 11.1. .1. Result of bylaw number four, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate, 2022, thanks. Uh, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for the collection of residential waste and recycling material as a special service for the town of Swan River for 2022, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Tony. <clears throat> Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. I'm under the impression that total gain to the town of Swan River by what I see the increase is about $43,000. My point is, what does that come down to in the rates? So in the future, when we're doing our budget, if this is an increase on special service levy, the town of Swan River has the opportunity to bring that back down by reducing the bill rate. That, that only works if, if it's the first time, if I'm understanding you're saying, it's the first time the special service bylaw is levied. If it's just an increase to our expenses and what it costs to provide it or a reduction in revenues, then I, I wouldn't say that it would be, you know, I, I guess if, if council just wanted to reduce the mill rate just because of that, but it, it wouldn't be accurate to say that uh, the special services is special service file went up because of expense increase or revenue decrease. Therefore, we're going to drop the mill rate. That I, I understand that. I'm just saying that when, when, I, when budget purposes come up here, and so I say there is the opportunity to lower the mill rate. That this would be one of the reasons we would do that. If council wishes, absolutely. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Resolve the bylaw number 5, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for uh, police protection as a special service for the town of Swan River for the years 2022 and 2023, both inclusive, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3. <clears throat> Resolve that bylaw number 6, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for the following special services fire protection, street lighting, street cleaning, sidewalks and boulevards, ditches and drainage, doctor recruitment, snow removal and dust control, road maintenance and construction, and emergency measures for the town of Swan River for the year 2022 and 2023, both inclusive, be read a first time. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result, result of pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, 
council will go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have a minister uh, meeting to uh, discuss the agenda items and also uh, the item on the conditional use application. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. I didn't move it. Result of the uh, application for conditional use number one, 2022, to allow a religious institution that offers counseling services in an RS5 zone be approved. That was moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Where are we? Councillor White. I move that we table it. To Is that the right wording? No, you must I move that we reconsider it. Reconsider. reconsider you must what? reconsider the motion to table. I want to reconsider the motion and I want to table it. You have to reconsider the motion to, to table. table. To table. Okay, as long as I get me to table it, I'll say that. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that if he says this right, as long as we get to table it. Because we really wanted to. Do I have a seconder for that reconsider? <laughs> Councillor Friesen. All in favor? <clears throat> Jesus didn't get more all the time. All right. That's being saved for the next day. And we'll uh, find another place by then. So, so mean just quickly, uh, members place. cannot reconsider a motion in the following cases. When the vote has caused something to be done that can't be undone. When a contract has been made and the other party has been notified of the vote. And some other parliamentary motion can obtain the same result and when the provisions of the motion have been partially carried out. <clears throat> so I think we'd be safe on the yeah. table. So, yeah, okay. All right, we learned something new to, today. To what uh, meeting will this be tabled to? The next yeah. council meeting? Yes, it has to be dealt with the next one. Hopefully, something will happen. But... Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.48 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Council Morio. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. We're adjourned. Good night.